Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, coming at you with the Hypertrophy Made Simple series. 16 videos so far of all of the fundamental ways in which to design hypertrophy programs and troubleshoot as quickly and to the point as possible. If you want jargon, if you want science, if you want deep explanations, what you want is the Hypertrophy Guide Central Hub on Renaissance Periodization website or any of our other longer form YouTube videos. Let's get right into it. How do you choose the exercises that you're going to be using to grow muscle growth? Well, here's the deal. How can you tell you're growing muscle? You can tell acutely and longitudinally in a couple of ways. Acutely, that is at the time of which you're training or right around it. If there's tension in the target muscle, that's probably going to cause growth. If there's a burn in the target muscle from an exercise, especially in high reps, that's probably gonna cause growth. If there's a pump in the target muscle after a few sets, that's a good sign. And if there's fatigue, disruption, and soreness in the muscle during and after, that's also a good sign something is happening that's gonna lead to growth. In the longer term, your repetition strength trends upwards, and that's a good sign that the muscles are getting bigger. So, how do you choose exercises? Well, you wanna choose exercises that do a couple of things. Things. They cause tension and burn in the target muscle. That's a really big, important thing. So if you feel bicep curls in your bicep, that's a very good sign. They give you the best pumps. The ones that give you the best pumps are probably the ones you want to use more for hypertrophy. You want to make sure that they zap your target muscle the most. So if you're, if your quads, you do some kind of leg press or hack squat, just destroys your quads. That's probably a good thing. You probably want to keep doing that exercise for a while. You want the exercise to stress your joints the least because that is a very sustainable thing that you can continue to train hard with. And you want the exercise to do this without a ton of needless generation of systemic fatigue. You don't have to work as hard. If you have two exercises, they give you the same pumps and burn everything else. And one is pretty easy to do. The other one's just really hard to do and takes a lot out of you. The easier one is the better choice. So. When you're choosing exercises and you've got exercises in your plan, how do you know if you wanna keep them for next month of training or take them out and replace them? Well, here's the deal. You wanna keep doing exercises that give you great tension, burn, pumps, and disruption. An exercise that is easy on your joints and is worth the systemic fatigue, that is it's really great for training relative to how much systemic fatigue it causes you, how much it wears you out. You wanna keep that, that's really good. And if that exercise is steadily climbing in rep strength, that's a good thing, awesome, keep it, don't change it. On the other hand, you probably wanna consider replacing an exercise with another one if that exercise no longer gives you very good tension, burn, pumps, or disruption. It's just like meh, right? If it's getting tough on your joints and it zaps strength for the rest of your program, if it takes you like an hour to get through some kind of deadlift variant, it just beats you up and you can't even barely train afterward, maybe you wanna replace that. And lastly, huge one, if your strength is plateauing on exercise, especially for over the last month, there just hasn't been any gains in rep strength, it's probably a good time to switch up exercises. What this means is that some exercises you rotate every other month and some you can keep for years on end because they just continue to provide excellent results. Folks, that's the super quick and easy guide to choosing exercises. See you next time for the next video.